Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and comedy film called, Small Soldiers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Globotech Industries, the top weapon defense contractor, has just acquired Heartland Toy Company as part of their big move to incorporate battlefield technology with home consumer products. Heartland's head toy designers, Erwin Wayfair and Larry Benson, meet with the executive assistant, Ms. Kegel, ahead of their big meeting. She briefs them about the company and leads them to a room. The designers meet Globotech CEO Gil Mars, who wants to hear their ideas about creating a new toy line. Erwin nervously presents his design, a team of hybrid monsters called the Gorgonites, lead by a character named Archer. On the other hand, Larry swiftly delivers his design, a team of toy soldiers whom he calls the Commando Elite, and is led by Chip Hazard. Gil selects Larry's idea for the project, and makes Erwin's Gorgonites the enemies of the Commando Elite. He then takes the idea a step further and orders a team to create a toy that moves and talks back as the children play with it. These will be actual live-action toys capable of playing back. After the meeting, Ms. Cagle informs the two that Gil has given them three months to complete the entire project. She also gives them their security cards and unique passwords to the company's online account. Later that night as they work on the designs, Larry accidentally forgets his password and inputs Erwin's password to search for internal parts. He then orders thousands of military-enhanced microprocessor chips. The new toy line is soon completed and is packed for shipping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Alan Abernathy tends to his family's toy store. The business has been slow and the store is on the verge of closing. A Heartland delivery truck stops in front of the store and the delivery guy, Joe, lets Alan sign on a couple of shipments for their store. Curious by the new toy line, Alan activates Chip Hazard and Archer. Alan is excited to see that the toys can move, talk, are voice activated, and even have a two-way radio system that acts as a walkie-talkie. He asks Joe if he could lend him the set and he'll pay him the money by the time the whole set is sold. Joe agrees and gives him a whole set. Alan leaves the toy in the back room as he sets up the rest of the action figures in the shop. Unbeknownst to him, Chip Hazard and Archer can move on their own and are about to start a war. Back at the front counter, Alan's neighbor and biggest crush, Christy Fimple, arrive with her little brother, Timmy, to pick out a toy for his birthday. Timmy sees the new toys and decides that it's what he wants for his big day. Christy asks Alan to reserve Chip Hazard for her brother and the two leaves. Alan looks out the store in dismay as he sees Christy's boyfriend, Brad, parked by the curb to kiss her. He returns to the back room and puts the toys back in their boxes. He finishes setting up the display, closes the shop, and brings his father's ticket. At their home, Alan's father, Stuart, is in a panic state as he prepares his things for his trip to attend a business seminar. His wife, Irene, tries to calm him down, but his nerves are rattled again by a ruckus coming from the Fimple's yard. It turns out, Christie's father, Phil, is hacking down a tree branch that's blocking his satellite dish. Stuart curses him out but his wife ushers him inside. Alan arrives just in time to give his father his plane ticket. Stuart thanks him, bids them goodbye, and leaves for his seminar. A little later, Alan is working on his homework when he finds one of the Gorgonites, Archer, inside his backpack. He activates the toy and is shocked when Archer suddenly talks back and repeats his name. Thinking that it must be his imagination, Alan goes back to studying. Meanwhile, back at the toy store, Chip Hazard breaks free from his box and frees the other members of the Commando Elite, Butch Meat Hook, Nick Nitro, Brick Bazooka, Link Static, and Kip Collagen. They set out on their mission to destroy all Gorgonites. Back at the house, Alan falls asleep studying and Archer comes back to life. He opens the computer and starts searching for a land called Gorgon. Suddenly, the cat climbs up on the desk and starts licking Archer. Alan wakes up and discovers that Archer is an actual live-action toy that has a mind of its own. Archer tells Alan that their only goal is to set the Gorgonites free. Back at the toy store, Chip heads the Commando Elite team and breaks the Gorgonites from their boxes. An all-out war starts and continues into the deep of the night. When morning comes, Alan finds all the toys missing from their boxes. Archer tells him that the Commando Elite must have fought them through the night. All that was left were pieces of one of the Gorgonites, Troglican. Christy arrives and assumes that the store has been robbed and helps Alan clean up. They bond quickly and soon learn that they have more interests in common than they think. Stuart arrives and Alan almost gets away with it until he finds out that the toy ship is broken. He also realizes that most of his workshop tools are gone. As Christy leaves, she hands him Archer, whom she kept away from his dad's sight. Alan stuffs the toy in his backpack and rides his bike home. Unbeknownst to him, the commando elite is keeping an eye on him and is launching an ambush. They launch Brick onto the bike but he's soon chased by a dog. Alan fends the dog away as Brick makes his way to the boy's backpack. He loses his grip and finds himself at the wheel again. The bike hits a pothole and Brick crashes onto the road in pieces. The commando elite tapes Brick back together and discovers Alan's house. Meanwhile, Alan calls customer service and complains about the toys but no one would take him seriously. Feeling frustrated, he jumps into bed and puts on his headphones, unwilling to talk to Archer. At Globotech, Larry had just finished announcing their new toy line when Erwin played him the tape of Alan's voicemail complaint. 
Irwin tells him that they can't have dangerous toys on the market or else they'll be forced to recall the line. Larry gives in and Irwin realizes that his colleague placed munition chips from the Department of Defense in children's toys. Back home while Alan is asleep, Archer explores the house. He opens the closet and finds Chip Hazard. The commando elite jumps on him and ties him up. In the bedroom, Alan wakes up and finds the soldiers torturing Archer over the sink. The toys run away as he frees Archer. He then takes Nick Nitro and places him inside the sink, destroying his plastic legs. Alan's parents come out to check the commotion and find him with a bleeding hand. As his parents reprimand him, Nick Nitro drags his body up the sink and escapes. Alan tries to explain that it was the toys but as expected, his parents don't believe him. He ends up confessing that Joe lent him the toys and he was planning to pay him back. They think he's gone insane and send him to his room. In the bathroom, Alan is mad at Archer for not helping him out, but the toy reminded him that he was the one who told him to shut up. The two then form a plan to find the Gorgonites before the soldiers do. In the garage, Chip has a rendezvous with his team. Nick Nitro joins them but his battery has already worn out. They then plan to enhance their weapons with the tools in the garage. The next day, Alan and Archer are back at the toy store. They think about where the Gorgonites might be hiding and Alan realizes that they must be in the trash. He goes to the dumpster behind the store and finds the rest of Archer's team, Ocula, Punch It, Scratch It, Insaniac, Slamfist, and Troglican. It turns out they fixed up Troglican using the broken radio from the store. Meanwhile, back at Globotech, Larry and Irwin talk to Ralph, the scientist who crafted the microprocessors. They learn that the chips are almost perfect, developing a sense of intelligence through learning, except for one key flaw, they can be destroyed by an electromagnetic pulse. Back at the house, Alan and the Gorgonites hang out in his room just as Christy calls. He invites her out but she turns him down, telling him that she's already dating Brad. As they innocently flirt, Chip Hazard hacks into the phone wire and listens in on their conversation, and learns that the Gorgonites are alive and in Abernathy's residence. The soldiers finish creating their weapons and set out for their assignments. Alan then learns that the group's main purpose is to look for their home, the Isle of Gorgon. He feels bad for telling them that the Isle of Gorgon doesn't exist and they'll have to find their own home. Meanwhile across the yard at the Fimples, Phil and his wife, Marion, are settling in for a night in front of their brand new, high-tech television set. The soldiers sneak into the room and fire a few sleeping pills into their drinks. The two soon fall asleep, and the troop sets camp in Christie's bedroom. Timmy arrives and tries to play with them but they quickly attack the boy and tie him up before throwing him into the closet. The troop soon finds Christie's doll collection. They integrate the dolls into their army by recreating Nick Nitro's chip into each of the dolls' brains. Now, the microchip has turned the dolls into an army of violent zombies ready for action. Back at the house, Alan teaches Archer about the wind and how there are some things that you can't see, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Archer feels reassured that if they keep looking, they will eventually find the Isle of Gorgon. When Christy gets home, she doesn't notice her parents knocked out and her brother in the closet. She rejects an invitation from Brad to hang out and heads up to her bedroom. When she opens the door, she's shocked to see the assembly of zombie dolls that have formed. She screams as the dolls take her down by the feet and tie her up. It's time for the dolls' revenge. Brad hears Christy's scream and rushes to her bedroom only to find her overtaken by the dolls. The toys lunge at Brad and he throws away the dolls. The commando elite arrives and fires a flamethrower at him, making him trip all the way down the stairs. Brad takes his flaming pants and runs out of the house. At Abernathy's house, the soldiers shoot a videotape through Alan's bedroom window. It's a recording of Christy. They forced her in front of the camera and are making her deliver a message to them. In exchange for Christy's safety, Alan must hand over the Gorgonites to them. Feeling determined, Alan conjures up a plan of counterattack. He delivers a box labeled Gorgonites in front of the Fimple's house. With the soldiers distracted, he runs to the backyard and fires a rocket that sends Archer parachuting into the Fimple's house. Archer opens the back door and lets Alan in. They find the Fimple's asleep and head over to Christie's bedroom while the soldiers drill a stick of dynamite into the box. Alan is disturbed to see the dolls and they try to take him over. Archer cuts off the rope from Christie's hand and now that she's free, she starts hammering the toys with a baton. The box outside explodes, but much to the troops' dismay, it's only a decoy. Christy gives Alan a kiss for saving her and another kiss to officially mark their relationship. When they run downstairs, the soldiers fire a flamethrower at them. The two escape through the bedroom window. As they run, an explosion comes from the garage and the troop drives out in their weapon-optimized vehicles. They fire at Alan's leg and take him down. Christy takes the motorcycle and rescues Alan. They escape but the soldiers are now in pursuit, firing at them with their weapons. Chip Hazard launches a rocket at a tree that narrowly misses the two. They fire another rocket, this time taking down a lamppost. The two drive through a ditch and destroy several of the commando elite as they crash and burn into a canal. Unbeknownst to them, Chip Hazard is still alive. He washes up at a nearby parking lot and sees the factory creating the commando elite toy line. He has just formed a new plan to retaliate. He sneaks into one of the trucks and threatens Joe with a blade. By the time Alan and Christy arrive home, the Fimples are already in a big argument with the Abernathys. They try to explain the situation to their parents but they won't believe them. As the Fimples try to leave, Larry and Irwin arrive. They confirm what Alan has been alleging all along. Stuart punches Larry in the face and tells him that his toys almost killed his son. On the other hand, Irwin is delighted to see his designs come alive. 
Suddenly, the lights go off. The soldiers have cut off the power supply. They spot the toy truck outside the house and see more commando elite soldiers rallying up. They are now in big trouble. Archer tells Alan that they have to surrender because the Gorgonites must lose, it's what they were created to do. Phil goes out, waving a white flag of surrender, but is quickly pushed back into the house by the overwhelming number of toys plus their huge flamethrower. The speakers start blasting loud music and the soldiers aim nails through the window. The humans and Gorgonites get down as the living room is trashed. They barricade the window and get back but they soon launch a couple of fireballs into the kitchen. Alan grabs a curtain and starts dampening out the fire while the others hide or guard the windows. Irene grabs a racket as Stuart barricades the door. As they launch more fireballs, Irene tosses them back with her racket, taking down a few of the soldiers. The group formulates a plan and Erwin reveals to them the toy's weakness which is an electromagnetic pulse. The only problem is they have to create a pulse or a field that is big enough to take all the toys down. The soldiers blow down their fence and bring in more weapons. Alan suggests climbing up to the two transformers outside and fusing them with a metal tool, causing an overload and a magnetic field to erupt and finally get them rid of the elites. As he grabs the tool, Stuart comes in and begs his son to not go through with it. Alan asks him to trust him one more time and his father eventually gives in. The group takes cover and Irene successfully destroys their fireball launcher. Christy sneaks out the back window with Larry and Irwin so that they can turn on all the electronics they own. Irene and Phil are forced to share the closets with Marion and Timmy. Meanwhile, Stuart creates a diversion for the soldiers as Alan runs out. They fire a nail gun at them and Stuart gets hit on the leg. The Gorgonites are now faced with a decision. They must help defend the humans and fight their destinies. As the father and son prepare to get hit by nails, the Gorgonites appear to their defense and start taking out the toys one by one. Alan tells Archer that they should prepare themselves because this force will also fry them too. Archer tells him to go and Alan makes a run for it as his father is caught in a net. At the Fimples, Christy calls the police as the men turn on the electronics. Alan has now climbed his way up the electric pole and comes face to face with Chip Hazard who starts firing at him. He makes him drop his tool but Chip's helicopter malfunctions and the vehicle dives towards Phil's satellite dish. As Chip steps on Alan's fingers, he savors the moment for his plan is now coming to fulfillment. Archer looks up and sees Alan struggling and fires an arrow to help him. He launches into the air right next to Chip. A fight ensues and Archer is quickly overtaken by the soldier. Chip pushes Archer off the pole and celebrates his victory. Alan has now gained hold to the pole and grabs Chip and places him between the Transformers. Chip screams as the Transformers fuse and turns into overload, releasing a large spark that sends Alan down to the ground. He wakes up and sees the horde of toys coming towards him and then his savior, Christy with the lawnmower. She rescues him again just in time as the Transformers explode, letting out a huge magnetic field and taking out all the toys almost immediately. When morning comes, the police and an ambulance arrive as well as security from the Globotech company. As the families clean up the mess, a helicopter arrives and Gilmars approaches them. He gives them checks as compensation for the damage and in an effort to avoid being sued. Alan takes the time to apologize to Joe for what he put him through, but Joe forgives him. This doesn't make Alan feel any better who's still looking for the Gorgonites. On the upside, he's got a new girlfriend now and he gives Christy another kiss after everything they've been through. A few hours later, Alan is still cleaning up the mess in the yard. He finds Archer's bow and then lifts up Phil's satellite dish. To his surprise, he finds the Gorgonites alive and well. They have survived the blast. The Gorgonites celebrate their victory and for once aren't feeling like losers. Alan soon takes them to a river by the woods and gives them his dad's toy boat. Now that the Gorgonites are free, they must sail on to find their own Olive Gorgon. Alan pushes the boat into the water and bids goodbye to his friends. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.